This is the Mac Mini Pro, and it's by far the closest thing to a Mac Pro killer that I've ever seen. So in this video, I'm gonna go through 10 real world differences after two months so that you'll know if this thing is powerful enough for you to buy right now, or if you should just wait for the M4 Ultra Mac Pro. First of all, the price is the biggest difference. This Mac Mini is priced at only $1,600 with upgrades compared to $7,000 for the Mac Pro. So this is actually affordable for many people out there who want a premium Apple Mac. This by itself is gonna be a huge factor because if the Mac Pro is over four times more expensive, it should be over four times better, right? Well, the performance charts in this video are gonna blow your mind. The second real world difference is the size and the portability. Now, of course, I've got this new Mac mini in this cool little aluminum Mac Pro case. So this is obviously a lot bigger than the actual Mac mini itself, which comes out to only 50 inches squared of internal volume compared to 2,950 square inches of internal space on the Mac Pro, making it over 59 times bigger in terms of volume. This thing can literally fit in your pocket or easily into your backpack, while the Mac Pro is seriously a massive pain to deal with, being insanely heavy and it takes up just way too much space on your desk. Now the third difference is the snappy single core performance. Now this has the M4 Pro chip, which has newer tech compared to the Mac Pro, which still has the M2 Ultra, and it's not even gonna get updated with the M4 Ultra until the end of the year, according to Mark Gurman. Now believe it or not, this Mac mini is 50% faster in terms of single core performance, which is just insane, and that translates to about 29% faster performance for basically web browsing using Speedometer 3.0, which is actually a good difference. And then for real world workflows, there's Figma web design using a project provided to us from 500 Designs, one of the best design studios based out of California. And here, believe it or not, the Mac mini was 25 seconds faster than the Mac Pro. So overall, for only $1,600, the Mac Mini is gonna feel a lot snappier and quicker for all the stuff you do online and in general for doing things like opening apps and everything else. Now before I get into multi-core performance, I gotta talk about difference number four, which is the ports. Now obviously the Mac Pro is gonna have a lot more ports, which is a pretty nice advantage. Eight Thunderbolt 4 ports compared to only three on the Mac Mini. I actually have a cable plugged in from the secret SSD that's here at the top. And this thing also has two USB-Cs on the front, which is pretty convenient with that headphone jack and HDMI and upgradable 10 gigabit ethernet. But the Mac Pro comes with two HDMIs, three USB-As, and dual 10 gigabit ethernet and extras on the Apple IO card as well. So the ports are better on the Mac Pro. However, the Mac Mini actually comes with Thunderbolt 5 ports, which is basically the biggest upgrade since Thunderbolt 3 because you actually get speed differences like when we tested out our custom DIY Thunderbolt 5 four terabyte SSD for only 500 bucks. You cannot get those speeds with the Mac Pro because of the limitations. Now moving on to difference number five, we have multi-core performance for extended and heavy CPU workloads. Well, the Mac Pro with the M2 Ultra gets 24 CPU cores with 16 performance cores compared to 14 CPU cores on this upgraded Mac Mini with only 10 performance cores. So it has 2.4 times more performance cores. However, in Geekbench 6's multi-core test, the Mac Mini is actually 7% faster than the Mac Pro. I can't believe Apple pulled this off. It's in Insane. And then moving on to Cinebench 2024 with the multi-core stress test. Yes, the M4 Pro Mac Mini is slower at 1549 compared to 1932, but if you turn up the fans to max speed, you do get a little bit more performance on the Mac Mini up to 1667, but still the Mac Pro is faster. But if you do a lot of quick multi-core optimized tasks, then the Mac Mini does get a speed advantage, so it's kind of a draw 
in terms of real world workflow, which is actually really impressive for 1600 bucks. Now for number six, here is a small one before we get into the graphics, which is the RAM differences. The Mac Pro comes with 64 gigs of RAM right away, which is a huge advantage compared to the Mac mini with the M4 Pro getting 24 gigs, but of course it's a lot more expensive and you can get up to 192 gigs of RAM on the Mac Pro compared to 64 on the M4 Pro Mac mini, which is three times more RAM for those insane one percenters out there that are doing scientific, mathematical, quantum manium leap equations or whatever. But the even more important thing is the memory bandwidth and the Mac Pro has 800 gigabytes per second compared to 273 on the Mac mini. And why does that matter? Well, take a look at this photo editing test right here. When we export 50, 42 megapixel raw photos, there's a small difference between the two. But when you do 500, that is where you see the Mac Pro really get far ahead because of that extra memory bandwidth. Now for number seven, let's move on to graphics performance. And this M4 Pro Mac mini gets up to a 20 core GPU, which we have in this one since it's upgraded compared to 60 GPU cores on the Mac Pro, which of course can be upgraded to 76. So in terms of raw graphics performance using Geekbench 6's Metal, it's almost twice as fast as the Mac mini. However, in real world gaming performance, testing 3 d Mark's Steel Nomad Lite, the Mac Pro is now only 60% faster, and that's because the M4 chip architecture has some nice improvements that help with gaming. But when we start testing ray tracing using Cinebench 2024's GPU test, believe it or not, the Mac Mini is now 12.5% faster, even though it has roughly half the raw GPU performance, and that's because the M2 Ultra chip does not have ray tracing, and this one does. So for real world tasks like 3D rendering and Blender, check this out. The Mac Mini is only six seconds slower than the Mac Pro, and that's a mind-blowing difference because that's real world 3D rendering, and you have 20 cores versus 64, so this is seriously impressive. And that brings me to number eight, which is one area where the Mac Pro actually dominates, and that's video editing. Because of the crazy ultra chip design, which combines two M2 Max chips together, the Mac Pro has an insane media engine with two video decoders, four video encoders, and four for ProRes as well, compared to only one of each on the Mac Mini. Because of this, video editing and exporting is insanely fast on the Mac Pro, especially for Final Cut 4K HEVC footage, which is the most common codec that most people use. Check this out, the Mac Pro finished in basically a third of the time, which is insane. And that's why we're still using an M2 Ultra Mac Studio for almost all of our editing. Now moving on to difference number nine, we have resale value. By far the biggest advantage of this Mac Mini is the resale value because when you buy something that's new, the resale value almost always drops, but it drops so much more on expensive luxury items like luxury cars. And that's what the Mac Pro is. It's an overpriced luxury car that loses tons of value since not that many people can afford it in the first place. And in order to find a used car buyer for it, you gotta keep dropping the prices. But since the Mac Mini is so much less expensive, it's already in the realm of where many people can afford it, so there's higher demand than for the Mac Pro, so dollar-wise, it doesn't lose anywhere near as much value. Especially if you go insane on the Mac Pro and get like 192 gigs of RAM and eight terabytes of storage, you're insane, you're gonna lose basically like all of your money because nobody's paying for that. So the Mac Mini is just such a better value. And finally, for the 10th difference, we have display support. The Mac Pro can support a lot more displays, up to eight 4K displays, six 6K displays, and three 8K displays compared to only up to three 6K displays on the M4 Pro Mac Mini, or simply one 
8K display through the HDMI port. But in my opinion, I don't think there is that big of a market for 8K display, so I don't think anyone out there is realistically buying more than one of them. And I don't see why anyone would want more than three 6K displays, so the Mac Mini is just fine in my opinion, unless you're just insane. So with that said, the Mac Mini Pro with the M4 Pro chip is by far the best value high-end desktop Mac ever created, trading blows with a $7,000 Mac Pro for only $1,600, which is incredible, and I'd recommend it to just about everybody. And yes, the M4 Ultra Mac Pro is coming later this year, but honestly, I still recommend 90% of people to just buy this Mac Mini right now because I think the Mac Pro is overpriced and the performance will be overkill for probably 95% of people out there. So I'll go ahead and leave a link to the best Mac Mini deal on Amazon down below, as well as a link to this cool Mac Mini Pro case, which by the way, is not sponsored, but definitely really unique. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, go ahead and subscribe above and check out one of those two videos right there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.